Hello, everyone. My name is Hudayf Abbas. And today I will speak about a subject in trading. Everyone knows, but only a few take action about it. Of course, we will speak about trading behavior and psychology. But before that, let me introduce myself to you and let you understand how I became passionate about the trading behavior or psychology of trading. I started my career with Orbex before a couple of years as an account manager. My job basically was calling the clients, follow up with them, give them any help they need, or provide them with any service or tool they need to improve their trade. But I wasn't really interested on making calls my whole life. I was really interested in trading because we always hear about the financial market and the money in the financial market. So of course I want to make money. Orbex's slogan is serving traders responsibly. So before we start with Orbex, we must have a strong background about all the trading aspects like trading behavior, risk management, technical analysis, fundamental analysis, etc. So once we speak to the clients, we can serve them well as we promised. So after I was doing my job to Orbex, following up with the clients, I was always asking them, if they won, how did they win? And if they lose, how did they lose? And for the losing traders, I was always hearing the same mistakes again and again and again from the same people, which most of it was like we got greedy or we got mad or we got afraid, so we lost our money. And only a few comments were about the technical or fundamental analysis or what we call it predictions. <clears throat> so then I started to be interested on this subject because like any other trader, once we enter the financial market, everyone will only start to search about the technical analysis or fundamental analysis or the best indicator in the market. And this is what most of people use just to bring the people up. But when I start to see why people is losing, it wasn't the predictions at all. After that, I started to have comments from people and do my own study in a small scale. And one day in 2018, at the end of that year, we had a strong analyst which has succeeded a success rate of his signals, more than 90% of his trades were successful as an analyst. Like he just gives signals, he doesn't enter the market. And we will go back to that why I said that, because it's different to be an analyst or a trader. So I was super excited to call my clients and see how much money they have made. And when I started to call them, I was shocked that most of them has lost money, they didn't win. And the few people who made money, they didn't make money as they should do, comparing to his results. And when I called them, I started to hear the same mistakes which they are doing, which is referral now purely to only the trading behavior and psychology. Then I understood that the most differentiated point could differentiate between a successful trader and a trader who is only Wasting his time and his money is the psychology of a trading or what we call it the trading behavior. Then I was lucky to participate in a big study with a big uh, financial consultancy and services company which collected data from one of the biggest 10 companies in the field and it has trades involved in stocks cryptocurrencies, uh, forex, all the instruments in the financial market. And the data, what we got from that study, it was shocking that most of the trades for people are successful. But the losing the trades outweigh the profit the trades. Like let's say in average, if they are winning in one trade 100, the losing the trades is 400. 
And the most important point we found in that study, it was that more than 90% of people who lose in this market, they lose in one trade. Most of their portfolio, especially if they are trading with leverage, or a big amount of their portfolio only in one trade. And we call this the destroying trade, which while we are losing, we don't close our trade. And when we studied what is the things that would lead us to that destroying trades, of course, it's the trading behavior. <clears throat> so from that point, I understand that the trading behavior is the key of success in trading. And I started to read a lot of psychology books, purely psychology, and then trading behavior books, until one time my brother, which he is a very good trader, he told me to read a book called Trading in the Zone, about a psychologist, he has a certificate with psychology, and he started to trade which he was, he proved that he was a very good and successful trader. At the advantage of that book that it doesn't only make you understand yourself in general for your psychology, it also provides you with many information like how to develop and deal with your psychology in general, not only on trading. And the strength point about this book that it provides the best risk management plan from my experience that you could ever try because it's well mathematically studied and it's based on our trading behavior. After I read that book, to be honest, all my result has been changed. And today I will share our knowledge from Orbex, that book, and the biggest study we made. And I hope I can help you just to know how to develop yourself with a trading behavior and from where to start in this market. So first of all, let's understand what is the psychology aspects that are involved in trading. So we have the greed. The greed in the trading is while we are winning and while we are losing. So while we are winning, and it's the minimal which that the minimum scenario could happen with the clients or the traders is while they are winning the trade, they want to get more money. So either they start to change the take a profit, put it wider to get more money, or they start to take more risk on the same direction so they can get more profit. And the other one, which is very common mistake and which destroy a lot of traders, that they don't want to close their trades. While they, are use, while they are losing, they are greedy. They don't want to close the trade and accept the loss. <clears throat> and they start to change the stop loss, or they start to take more risk on the same directions, hoping that the market will get back to them. And that was one of the most mistake most of traders do and lose their money. And number two is being biased. And this is, by the way, it's not only with the individual traders. It also happens for the institutional traders. Once, let's say, a big company is presenters sitting with each other, they ask each other, where do you see the gold? Or where do you see the market? And if some of them say the market is going up, and he enter a trade just to show everyone that he's, he was right. And he got biased to his trade. I have a quote stuck in my mind. They always say, don't get merry with your position. Your position, you enter it, you lose or win. That's it. I don't think about it. But he want to prove for everyone that he was right. And he will not close the trade. And the market is going against him. And he will keep waiting until they lose a lot of money. And there are a lot of hedge funds, big hedge funds, which closed because of that. Error. <clears throat> Three, we have the fear. Fear is once we have the study, we enter the market, we have our take a profit, we have our stop loss. And the market in the middle didn't hit our take a profit. We was in a profit. 
So we are afraid that the market will not hit our take profit, so we close the trade. But that's a big mistake, which will change the whole equation. Our equation, what we work on in this market, that we know that technical analysis or fundamental analysis, at the end, after taking many trades, we know the success rate is 60%. So if we didn't get our trade to take its way, we will change the whole equation. So here from fear, we start to, uh, we, we start to close our trade before it hit the take profit or the stop loss. And that happens while they are losing. Before it hit the stop loss, we close the market. But maybe the market will come back while you closed. Or if you are winning, maybe the market will hit your take profit. So you have to stick with your trade. And there is another quote from Big Hitch Fund Managers, which I will uh, recommend you with a book. It's called Market Wizards, which has interviews with the biggest hedge fund managers. One of them says, once we enter a trade, our IQ goes to zero. And this is why we have just to enter the trade and no, it may win, it may lose. We don't have to think about it. We have the overconfidence, and this is the overconfidence which usually happens with men. There is a study about men and overconfidence in all aspects in life, and especially in trading, while we are winning, we start to think that we control the market. And what we had from our study showed us that 95% of people who won in four trades in a row, they lose a very big amount in the fifth trade. And they may lose the whole profit they have made or even more because we think that we control the market so we start to take bigger risk. Addiction and overtrading, it's like smoking. The market has two sides of addiction. One of them is chemical because our, our bodies start to produce uh, hormones like dopamine, cortisol, citronine. So we start to miss that feeling of producing the hormones. And sometimes we're just sitting down while there is nothing to enter the market. There is no opportunity. We just enter because we get addicted psychologically to it. FOMO is also fear, but I kept it alone because it's one of the most common mistakes that people do. Fear of missing the opportunity. Let's say we have the strategy that I'm following, it's telling me to enter the market after 50 bips from now. So I don't enter here. I either put my pending order or wait for the market. Maybe I'm checking the volume if I want to enter or no. And then I enter the market before I should enter. And that will ruin my whole equation also. And that's one of the most common mistakes that happens. Trading is 90%. Waiting and 10% only taking the decision. Revenge trading, and that was the most reason why most of people lose their money, is once they lose, they get angry and they want to get revenge from the market. But we have to understand that market is not a human. It has its own laws and we have to play with its own laws. We can't control it. So they enter the market again being angry that they will get their money back. After we understand these psychological aspects, every time we face them, we have to write them down, and now I will say what we will do with them shortly. Before that, let us go a little bit about the risk management. I will give you the best risk management plan I ever read in this business for Mark Douglas, the writer of this book, Before that, let us under, understand the risk reward. We have the aggressive risk taker, which is the investor who seeks the highest risk to get the higher reward, the highest reward. It's not logical to risk $100 to win $10 or $50, which many traders do just because they want to enter the market. So before we enter the market, we have to know our risk. And our risk plan must be planned for one year ahead. Moderate risk taker, like the idea here, the more risk I want to take, the more, risk, the more reward I'm aiming to have. And we have the low risk investor or the risk averse, which they are seeking for low risk and very small profits. 
That will lead us to create the capital of risk management plan. First of all, we have to understand before we enter, we can say, we're going to say like in this round, I'm going to lose 30% of my account. So let's say I have 10,000. If I want to lose 30% in this round, it will be 3,000. 3, so I'm aiming to lose, I'm risking $3,000. Of course, I'm aiming for 3,000 or more, at least like one to two, we call it. And now we will go for it. Then we have to know how much we are willing to lose on each trade. And this risk management plan, which was written by Mark Douglas, it also take in its consideration our trading behavior. So in this market, we have to imagine that we have a sniper, and each bullet, it costs me, let's say, $50. I will shoot. I will get $50 or 100 back. I will lose 50 or I will get 100 back. And I have to stick with this plan. And this is the most important point with risk management plan. I have to determine a losing amount for each trade I enter for a whole year. Like, I can't have one trade, I lose $50 and another trade I'm losing $100. And here, we just have to understand that the volume of our trades is determined by how far is our stop loss. We don't say we will enter, uh, let's say, uh, one mini for all my trades. This is one of the most common mistakes, and this is wrong. How far is my stop loss? How big or small will be my volume? Number three, don't change your plan until you finish sufficient amount of trades. Don't change any risk. And I recommend you to keep on your plan for one year at least, especially at the beginning. So let's understand the risk reward. Then I will give you a quick example about this risk management plan. And you will see how easy is the trading if you just follow the risk management plan and the technical analysis. But where we all fail is with the trading behavior. So the risk reward, if we say one to two, it means that I will risk $1 in order to get $2. Or I will risk $50 in order to get $100. So I will give you an example. If we have the worst outcomes of, from all our trades. So let's go for this example. In this example, we have 10,000, we entered, we will risk 30% of, of our account. So how we do it? If we are going to take an aggressive risk taker, we divide the amount that we want to risk, the 3,000, on 20 trades, because I said, and that will give me the amount that I can lose on each trade. So if I divide the 3,000 on 20, it will give me $150. So I will risk on each trade $150. Imagine I entered with uh, an analyst that his success rate was only 45%, but his risk reward was 1 to 1.5. So I will lose with him 150 or I will win with him 225. And I took with him 60 trades, 33 was losing trades, which will give me 33 multiplied by 100. So the loss will be 4,950. And I only won with the 27 trades, 225, because the risk reward is 1 to 1.5. 1 so it will give me 6,075. Uh, 6, so the net profit value will be 1,125. Once we look at it, it's super easy. but. If we want to apply that to the market, we will start to face the psychology aspect, which always doesn't let us follow our plan in the right way. Now we will go for the most important point that we have to do as a traders, which is generalizing our trades. And the most important point here we have to do, we have to write down the psychology aspects that we faced, and how much it costed us, even if it let us win. Maybe I felt afraid on the market, and it worked with me. I have to put how much I lost, how much I win. 
And the most important point, to see after I finished my trade, what happened to the trade. So let's say I have opened a trade. I give you an example here. Let's say we have a trade here, which was the stop loss, 1,950, the take profit, 1,940, and we sold at 1,977. I should follow the plan, but we must have the change of the plan. So here I change the plan and I close before the take profit. I should close at 1,977, but I close at 1,959. The outcome was 900. But if we compare how much we lost because we closed before our take profit hit, the loss was 950 cost of fear. So the fear here cost me 950. Thank you very much. And I hope uh, I gave you any information that could help you with the trading. And if you have any question, you are welcome in our booth 25, Orbex Company. Thank you.